This channel has only one video uploaded, has already gained over 2,000 subscribers, and their first video has gained almost 60,000 views. This channel, started just one month ago, has over 4.3 million views and 23,000 subscribers. This channel, started just two months ago, has over 1.3 million views on their first ever video and over 14,000 subscribers. And even though these three channels are all extremely different, they have one strategy in common that any small struggling YouTuber can replicate to get more more views. And spoiler alert, I'm not talking about their titles, thumbnails, or video quality. If you haven't spotted it yet, let me explain. But before I can do that, in order for you to understand the rest of this video, I need you to set your playback speed to 0.5. I know this is kind of weird, but I'm about to speed up this video, so if you don't change your settings right now, you won't be able to understand anything I'm about to say. And don't worry, this will all make sense at the end of the video. So, I probably now sound pretty terrible, but now we can get into this video. When it comes to breaking the algorithm, we first need to think about what it is that YouTube actually wants. Because obviously, YouTube's going to design their algorithm in a way that it best achieves YouTube's goal as a company, which is to, surprise, make money. And so Essentially, the algorithm is designed to do the things and promote the videos that will make YouTube the most money from a long-term perspective. But what are those things? Well, back in the day, the YouTube algorithm used to heavily reward videos that just got a lot of clicks. This is because every time someone clicked on a video, YouTube had the opportunity to show them an ad, which is the main way YouTube makes money. So more clicks equals more ad views equals more money. But YouTube discovered a flaw in the system, which was purely incentivizing videos that just got clicks, incentivize creators to just create clickbait. And while that may have got YouTube a few ad views in the beginning, viewers would ultimately leave the platform and be less likely to come back next time. And when YouTube noticed this, they shifted their algorithm so that it promoted videos that didn't just get a click, but that actually kept people on the platform for as long as possible. Because, for example, if YouTube could keep viewers on the platform for one to two hours at a time and keep them coming back for more content every single day, long term, those viewers are going to encounter more ads, pay for more memberships and merch, and generate YouTube far more money than they would under the previous clickbait model. And so you might hear a lot of YouTube gurus talking about click-through rate and retention and session time and viewer satisfaction. Yes, all of these things are important, but ultimately it's all just to fulfill YouTube's goal of keeping viewers on the platform for as long as possible from a long-term perspective. But what does this have to do with breaking the algorithm and why are you watching this video in 0.5 speed? Well, a while ago I had a gaming channel. It was actually the first successful YouTube channel I ever had. And the main series that blew that channel up was a Star Wars Battlefront Funny Moments series. Essentially, our subscribers would submit lots of clips, we would pick our favorites, make a compilation from those best clips, and then post those compilations as funny moments videos. And these videos got a bunch of views, but the problem was creating them took a significant amount of time because we had to sort through all the different clips, add them together, add sound effects and memes to make it funny, etc. etc. And so because of this, sometimes I couldn't post videos as frequently as I wanted to. And then I thought, what if I just use the videos I've already created and compile them into one longer video and then post that on the channel? It would take very little work because the clips already sorted through and edited, and it would give me an excuse to post an extra video on the channel, which would get me more views and subscribers. And here's an example of one of those videos here. You can see I positioned the funniest moments so far videos, but in reality, these videos were just all the previous videos just sort of stitched together. As you can probably see, my funniest moments so far videos tended to get a lot more views than my regular funny moments videos. And this was kind of surprising to me because these funniest moments so far videos weren't any better than my individual funny moments videos. Remember, it was the exact same footage, just compiled into a longer video. They also weren't unique or original because most of my subscribers had already seen the clips from the previous videos, and my click-through rate didn't seem to be much higher than my regular funny moments videos. So what was going on here? Why were they getting more views? And what does this have to do with breaking the algorithm or you watching this video at 0.5 playback speed? Well, I think the reason these funniest moments so far videos perform so much better is the same reason the videos from the channel I showed you earlier were able to blow up so quickly compared to their competitors. See, let's do some math. If we take this video, it's about 10 minutes long, and so the maximum amount of time a viewer can watch this video for is 10 minutes and 6 seconds. So even if you're watching this video all the way to the end, they can give me a maximum of 10 minutes and 6 seconds of watch time. And remember, watch time is the thing the YouTube algorithm really likes because the more watch time, aka the more time YouTube can keep viewers on the platform, the more money YouTube makes. However, on this funniest moment so far video, viewers can watch this video for a maximum of 34 minutes and 50 seconds. And so because of this, my funniest moment so far videos usually got more watch time than my regular videos, and I think that's the main thing that led to these videos performing so much better. Now this might sound like a far-fetched theory, but look at the example channels I started off this video by showing you. Notice how long their videos are compared to most of their competitors. Even Mammoth's video, which seems to be a relatively average length of 12 minutes, is actually significantly longer than many of the other successful videos in this niche. But even look at the big channels nowadays, Mr. Beast, Eric, Ryan Trahan, Dude Perfect. Look at their average video length nowadays compared to where it was a few years ago or when they first started. In almost all cases, they're making longer videos. So does this mean all you have to do is make videos longer, you get more watch time, and the algorithm will love you? Well, yes and no, because there's a few caveats. For example, if you increase the length of your 10-minute video to 20 minutes, but to do that, all you did was add more filler content, which made the video worse and less engaging. Now viewers might leave that video a lot sooner than they would have if that video was its original 10 minutes in length. So for example, your 20-minute video might now get an average of three minutes of watch time per viewer, which is obviously not great. To put that into perspective, if one of your competitors put out a five-minute video, but that video was incredibly engaging, and so all the people who clicked on that video watched it all the way to the end, that five-minute video is going to be getting five minutes of watch time per viewer, meaning it's keeping people on the platform for much longer than your 20-minute video that has an average of three minutes of watch time per viewer. And so that five-minute video, despite being shorter, is going to get more love from the algorithm. And to give some concrete examples, my funniest moments so far video, I didn't add more filler content or make the clips longer. I simply added more clips. In Mr. Beast videos, he doesn't add more filler. He adds more challenges, scenes, and content. I hope this distinction makes sense. And in case you still don't believe me, at the beginning of this video, I asked you to decrease your playback speed. And I did this because I want this video you're watching right now in and of itself to prove this one crucial point. So normally, if you watch a 10-minute video at regular speed all the way to the end, that video is going to be credited with 10 minutes of watch time. Now earlier we've seen our examples taking extended video duration to have the opportunity to get more watch time per viewer. But the thing you really need to understand is that these longer videos that perform better aren't performing better because of their length. They're performing better because they're getting more watch time per viewer than their competitors' shorter videos. Which brings me to why you're watching this in 0.5 speed. Because of the decreased playback speed of this video, for every one second of video footage, you're adding more than one second of watch time. Because the decreased playback speed means you have to spend more time on YouTube watching the video for longer than its actual duration. So instead of you being able to watch a maximum of 100% of this video, you're now able to watch it for a maximum of 200%, all thanks to decreased playback speed. This video has the opportunity to get a lot more watch time per viewer than all of my other videos, and that should mean the algorithm will want to promote this video more. And so what I'm trying to prove with this experiment is that even though asking your viewers to watch your videos in a decreased playback speed is very impractical, and it's not something I think you should do, this video should prove the importance of watch time per viewer. And so instead of approaching your channel through the lens of how can I make my videos longer, you should be thinking how can I maximize my watch time per viewer. So if you compare this video to other similar length videos on my channel, and this one has a lot more views, then this is your undeniable proof that watch time per viewer is a big deal, and it's something you want to be mindful of when you're planning your upcoming videos, so you can get the maximum amount of love from the YouTube algorithm. But speaking of being loved from the YouTube algorithm, click the video on screen. I'm going to show you another very practical strategy that will make the algorithm love you no matter how small your channel is. So check it out.